Welcome to Unfiltered. Here's tonight's headline. It's Hoosier versus Hoosier. All eyes are on South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg, who has had quite the week. Following an impressive first quarter fundraising haul of $7 million, he surged in the polls. The latest figures from Iowa and New Hampshire, two early primary states, have him in third place behind Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders. That's right. A guy whose name most people couldn't pronounce until a couple weeks ago is third in the polls. He's getting a ton of media attention, including an appearance on Ellen this week, and he hasn't even officially announced his 2020 candidacy yet. That's expected to happen tomorrow in South Bend. But the biggest news this week came from his war of words with fellow Hoosier, former Indiana governor turned Vice President Mike Pence over God and marriage. It all started at the LGBTQ Victory Fund National Champagne Brunch last weekend when Buttigieg, who is gay, zeroed in on Pence's past anti-LGBTQ policies. Speaking only for myself, I can tell you that if me being gay was a choice, it was a choice that was made far, far above my pay grade. And that's the thing I wish the Mike Pence's of the world would understand. That if you've got a problem with who I am, your problem is not with me. Your quarrel, sir, is with my creator. Late this week in an exclusive interview with CNN's Dana Bash, the VP responded this way. I think Pete's quarrels with the First Amendment. Awesome. All of us in this country have the the right to our religious beliefs. I'm, I'm a Bible-believing Christian. He'd do well to reflect on the importance of respecting the freedom of religion of every American. And that was followed by Buttigieg's response on Ellen yesterday. I'm not critical of his faith. Uh, I'm critical of bad policies. Uh, I don't have a problem with religion. I'm religious, too. Uh, I have a problem with religion being used as a justification to harm people and especially in the LGBTQ community. I'm not interested in feuding with the vice president, but if he wanted to clear this up, he could come out today and say he's changed his mind, that it shouldn't be legal to discriminate against anybody in this country for who they are. And for his part, Pence defends policies like the Religious Freedom Restoration Act as preventing discrimination against people of faith. Whomever you side with, it's an interesting and refreshingly civil discussion between two men of faith who I think deeply believe what they're saying. Buttigieg, on the one hand, has lived and experienced the very discrimination he attributes to Pence's policies. Pence, on the other, is like millions of other Christians and Muslims and Jews in this country who believe marriage should be between a man and a woman. Neither is taking a huge risk here either. Buttigieg's views are in line with his bases, and Pence will find plenty of support for his views on the religious right. And it's a smart strategic decision by Buttigieg. As he introduces himself for the first time to millions of Americans, he's engaging millennial voters for whom LGBTQ rights are uncontroversial and long overdue. And it sets him apart in a very crowded Democratic primary field, to great effect as evidenced by those surging poll numbers. But some other polls are important for Buttigieg, Buttigieg, too. Polls on gay marriage. A majority of Americans, 67 percent by Gallup's last polling in 2018, believe marriage between same-sex couples should be legal. Even among religious Americans, gay marriage is polling better and better. A PRRI, Public Religion Research Institute survey, of more than 40,000 Americans found two-thirds of Catholics, Orthodox Christians, and white mainline Protestants are now in favor. Support is growing among Mormons and evangelicals. Majority support now includes African Americans, up to 52 percent. Hispanic Americans are at 61 percent. In fact, Alabama is now the only state in the country where a majority of residents say they oppose same-sex marriage. Here's the deal. America is, in short, moving on from its homophobic past. It's still out there, of course, but LGBTQ equality is the future. As someone who has long supported gay rights even before many Democrats did, my message to Republicans has been unequivocal. Resist this progress at your own peril. But there's another part of this story that's getting less attention, and I think it's just as important, if not more so. Buttigieg's LGBTQ message 
is a good one. It's personal for him. But the other Democrats running for president also share his views. What they can't all do is speak personally and convincingly about God. They'll all try, of course, but Buttigieg is a devout, unapologetic Christian. He speaks his conviction fluently and with alacrity. That's frankly something we haven't seen in a long time from a Democratic candidate. That's important. Whatever you believe, and I'm an atheist, 73% of the country is Christian. Buttigieg is speaking for and to moderates who are maybe turned off by Trump's politics of revenge, but feel like progressives don't get them either. His message of Christian compassion may very well resonate with those voters. Buttigieg is reminding middle America what it sounds like when a Democrat talks positively about God. Joining me to discuss our former executive director of the New York State Democratic Party, Basil Smigel, and former RNC comms director, Doug High. So Basil, yes. how good has this fight with Pence been for Pete Buttigieg? First of all, Mayor Pete has been phenomenal on the campaign trail. Yeah. And I think this fight with Pence is certainly good for his fundraising because he can show uh, what differentiates him from the other Democrats is that he's actually having a current fight with this administration in the, yeah. in the, in the, pres in the person of Mike Pence. But I think what's also interesting, and you, you talked a bit about this, he's not just calling out Donald Trump. He's actually calling out, I think, Republican hypocrisy. Not all Republicans, mm. but certainly some Republican mm. hypocrisy, particularly among the evangelicals who sidled next to Donald Trump. Right. And for Mike Pence, who will talk about about maybe attacks on his religion, but what, what the fact that he uses religion to justify his policy mm -hmm. positions, that's what's really dangerous. Mm. And I think for Mayor Pete to call that out is certainly within, is within his right and purview to do so. Yeah. And that, I think, to be able to extend that through the campaign is only going to be uh, very good for him in terms of bolstering his numbers. Well, Doug, I mean, this high-minded, very polite conversation, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> between two guys who are like, all due respect, no, all due respect, um, is, is, is one thing. But can Mayor Pete, Pete uh, Buttigieg, can he handle Trump the same way? Or is he going to sort of get sucked into Trump's vacuum of name calling and all of that? Yeah, you know, we hear, we hear the word resist from Democrats so much. And what it often means is the more opposed to Trump, the more they act like him. And we see that so much yeah, with, yeah, yeah. with the AOCs of the world. Mm -hmm. Pete is a very different message and a very different yeah. messenger. Yeah, yeah. And great it's, point. You know, we talk about Iowa nice. There's also Indiana nice, which is why you see oh, yeah. Pence and, and, and Buttigieg really trying to out nice each other. But yeah. that's also because they have a personal relationship. We forget mm -hmm. Mike Pence was the governor yeah. of that state, worked with Mayor Pete when he was mayor. Yeah. It's also, again, as we've seen so much divisive, divisiveness and nastiness in our politics. Politics, yeah. whether from the president or from Democrats, that they can have this kind of civil conversation yeah. is, to some extent uplifting. It, it really is. Um, I, and look, I, I think Buttigieg has a shot at this. It's a long shot, yeah. but I think he's got a shot. Um, but could he also be setting himself up for Veep? I mean, if a, if a more progressive candidate wins the nomination, he might look pretty great on the ticket as sort of a balance uh, from middle America and right. of a different... Sure, build. as you talked about, from the Midwest, he um, presents a good balance to perhaps whoever's at the top of the ticket that may have to be Trump-like. Yeah, to be able right. to go at Donald Trump. But the truth is, with what do we know? 18 candidates in this race? Uh. A lot of them are vying for number two at this point. Yeah. Especially because you have... At you best. Know, this, essentially, <laughs> this, right, essentially so you have the same three in Biden and Bernie and maybe Pete and, yeah. and maybe Beto in some cases, um, sort of moving, you know, sort of yeah. staying at the top three. So, uh, I, yes, I think he'd be a great number two. Yeah. And I think... He actually may be, in many ways, representative of the future of the Democratic Party. Number two well, wouldn't the that bullet? be interesting? Yeah. Because, as I mentioned, Doug, mm -hmm. I don't think you hear a lot of Democrats talking about God the way mm -hmm. Pete Buttigieg can. And we heard mm -hmm. a little of it this week. But if you go back, you can find real sort of muscular defense of Christianity. Yep. He speaks the language fluently. Um, I think that's really interesting and maybe an indication that the GOP's stronghold mm -hmm. on religion might be over, especially with, you know, Trump in the White House. No, and there's been a real increase in, in democratic evangelicalism, uh, especially among African-American, African-American women, yeah. um, for instance, African-American mothers, mm -hmm. um, especially. So this is an area where, where he and other Democrats, if they're willing to step forward, um, can make yeah. some inroads um, into Democrats. And the other thing I, I find, and I'll tell you, anybody who spent any time around Pete Buttigieg knew that, that he was capable That's of right. this. He, I've right. been around him twice. Uh, he was the former president of the Harvard IOP um, right. Institute of Politics up there and got to see him in action and knew three, four years ago, this guy's a star. star. Yeah. He yeah. just didn't know what it was going to be. Yeah. And to me, to some extent, he's Beto O'Rourke 
but with substance. No, and that's, that's a real what difference. I say. I say yeah, all the Beto fans right. are spelling Buttigieg wrong. I mean, <laughs> I, think, that's right. I think he I mean, really, he's the better version. And I think what's interesting, um, according to reporting on CNN's own website, not the, the sort of not religious is now just as popular as people who identify themselves as Catholics. And that's actually really important if you're Mike Pence and Republicans because what you have the ability to do, and I think it's unfortunate, but what they could end up doing then is sort of painting millennials or painting Democrats as sort of being not particularly religious, secular, don't have God, yeah. secular, don't have God as, the, as center of their lives. And I think that's what Mike Pence is setting up to do, hmm. but I don't think that that's going to work in the long run.